Thank you for joining Pennside Presbyterian for this time of prayer, scripture, and reflection. I am Pastor Carol Brown, filling in for Pastor Dave. We are so glad you have joined us. Dave Cullen will start us off with a song. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because we're given Jesus Christ the Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because we're given Jesus Christ the Son. And now let the weak say we are strong. Let the poor say we are rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say we are strong. Let the poor say we are rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for your blessing today. As we gather in your presence, may the doubting find faith, the anxious be encouraged. May the tempted find help and the sorrowful find comfort. May the weary find rest and those with strength be renewed. May the elderly find consolation and youth be inspired. Bless our time together this day, for we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture comes from the eighth chapter of Deuteronomy, where Moses is instructing the people of Israel. Take heart that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness. He made water flow for you and fed you in the wilderness with manna to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. One evening, as his family sat down for dinner, Tommy asked, Why don't we thank God for our food like Billy's family does? His mother replied, your father worked hard all week to provide the money for the food that I spent this afternoon preparing so that we had something to eat. If you feel like thanking someone, you could start with your father and me. 2020 has been a hard year, and as we prepare to celebrate Thanksgiving next week, we may be asking, how do we give thanks when life can be so difficult? When all we see are problems and there seems to be no end to them in sight, hope fades and depression darkens our soul. Paul's instructions to give thanks anyway seems impossible to do. It is equally difficult to give thanks when pride convinces us that we are successful, self-reliant individuals who are able to take care of ourselves without anyone's help. The more confident we become in our own power as human beings, the less inclined we are to remember to give thanks to God. Tommy's mother revealed her belief that because she and her husband had provided the food on the table through their own efforts, 
There was no reason for thanking God. Imagine her surprise when Tommy suggested, maybe we ought to thank God for you and Dad. A woman, while shopping at the local mall, felt the need for a coffee break. She bought herself a little bag of cookies and put them in her bag. Then she got in line for coffee, found a place to sit at one of the crowded tables, and taking the lid off her coffee and pulling out a magazine, she began to sip her coffee. Across the table from her, a man sat reading a newspaper. After a minute or two, she reached out and took a cookie. And as she did, the man seated across the table reached out and took one too. This surprised her, but she didn't say anything. A few minutes later, she took another cookie, and once again, the man did so too. She was starting to get a bit upset, but still, she didn't say anything. After a few more sips of coffee, once again, she took another co cookie, and so did the man. And now she realized there was only one cookie left, and she struggled to keep quiet. The man also realized that only one cookie was left. And before she could say anything, he took the last cookie, broke it, and offered half to her, proceeded to eat the other half himself. And then he smiled at her, putting his paper under his arm. He got up and walked off. She was annoyed. Her coffee break ruined. She folded her magazine, opened her shopping bag, and there she found her own unopened bag of cookies. The story reminds us how gracious God is. Even when we do not act well toward God, nor appreciate all that God does for us, it makes us think about how little we appreciate what we have or act like we know from where it has come. It's a reminder like we found in today's Hebrew scriptures. Moses, after telling the people of Israel how they will prosper in the land they are about to enter, how they will eat their fill and have fine houses and large herds, he says, Do not say to yourself, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is God who gives you power to get wealth, so he can confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is swearing to you today. Deuteronomy speaks so well of what we all know somewhere in our hearts, but often seem to forget in our actions and attitudes. It speaks of how everything we have is a gift from God. The Apostle Paul reminded the Thessalonians, and he reminds us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. This is a step beyond remembering God and thanking God for all the blessings we enjoy. This is what someone has called thanks living. God calls us to rejoice, to pray, and give thanks. We know how easy it is to rejoice when everything's going well in our lives, when we are blessed by good health, a rewarding job, people with whom we share special moments, a community of faith in which we learn and grow and offer meaningful service. We readily offer our thanks and praise to God. Or do we? Do we sometimes forget to thank God when everything is going well? Most of us would admit that when we face difficult situations, it's not hard to ask God for help in our struggles. But giving thanks... It's hard to rejoice and give thanks when we are eight months into a pandemic and the number of cases are continuing to rise, or when we feel lonely and isolated, or our health is impaired, or we are seeking meaningful employment, or any number of ills that continue to afflict us. But can we realize that even in the midst of difficulties, we can find some reason to rejoice and give thanks. Henry Ward Beecher likened giving thanks to searching for particles of iron in a sandbox. If I look for them with my eyes and search for them with my fingers, I will be unable to detect the iron. But let me take a magnet and sweep through the sand. 
The magnet draws to itself the almost invisible particles by the mere power of attraction. A thankful heart sweeps through the day as the magnet finds iron particles. So the heart finds some blessing from God in every hour. When we dare to give thanks in all circumstances, we will discover the treasure of God's gifts in the midst of situations that may be less than ideal. Next week, Thanksgiving will be celebrated throughout our country. Thanksgiving remains one of the few holidays whose original intent has been preserved without too much commercialism. Essentially, it continues to be a day when people come together to count their blessings. Thanksgiving can also become a day when we glance back over the past to contemplate the course our life is taking. What kind of year have we experienced? What hardships or sufferings have we endured? What special blessings have touched our lives? We give thanks not only because of the blessings we have received, but also for days of struggle and times of suffering when we have known God's presence. Thanksgiving is not only a response to good things, the ability to give thanks in times of joy and sorrow, celebration and suffering, makes giving thanks more than a matter of etiquette. It becomes a sign of faith, a declaration of dependence, a vote of confidence, and an expression of hope. In everything, give thanks is one way to keep alive that sense of awe and wonder by which our daily lives become more wonder-filled and God-blessed. Let us pray. O oh God, we are yours. You have claimed us through Jesus Christ, and we give you thanks for the many ways you have been present with us throughout our lives. We thank you for the gift of your love. We thank you for wanting to know us and love us and care for us and challenge us. In the midst of our busy lives, help us to set aside the time we need to be with you, to grow in grace, to discern your will, to be assured of forgiveness, to express our thanks especially during this time of pandemic. We are grateful for the presence of your spirit working among us. We ask that you renew our weary world, give wisdom to those who govern, heal those who are sick, comfort those who sorrow, give peace to the dying, give us courage to speak out against injustice, to reach out to those who are hungry, homeless, seeking meaningful work, and those who are alone. May our prayers move us to act with God's love for all people. And as we pray, we pray as Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may God fill us with joy, love, and peace, that we may feel God's presence and offer our thanksgiving through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>